Okay, it's always so hard to tell when it's actually going. Hopefully we don't have a lot of uh, echoing in here today, but we are in another place that has hardware, hardwood floors, and so hopefully we don't have a lot of uh, sound issues. Um, okay, so I think that we're going. Okay, I have to turn that off. I always have to remember. Okay, now, okay, Sodbuster Living is here, Tina G is here, and Jennifer Russell is here. So welcome, everybody. Um, I am excited about my title today. I'm really, really excited about it because since two weeks ago when I first said, hey, guys, is there anybody local who wants to come and help us on the tiny cabin, we have had just a huge outpouring of offers for help and not only offers for help but friendships that we've made and um, new YouTube channels for me to go and watch it's always fun to have a new uh, set of videos to watch about something that I don't know how to do so yes Aardvark I even have you on the list so don't worry don't worry it will be awesome it will be an exciting show so the reason that I want to talk about this today is that a lot of the people that have offered to come and help me are just the, like the ultimate lumberjack type of person. And the series that we're putting together for us to put up on each of our channels is very, very heavy on skills. So I have my homesteading skills. I have the things that I do that are kind of unconventional, the butchering, the milking, the, the gardening and really raised beds, all these things that I do, they're skills I've gained, but I have some skills that I really, really want to gain. And they have a lot to do with carpentry. They have a lot to do with um, understanding how tools work. And, um, and so you'll see in the links below, several people that we're going to be doing collaborations with over the next month or two and um, they're they're carpenters they're plumbers they're just incredible guys and i'm so excited to rub shoulders with them um so one of them is swamp creek cabin they're here so they're down there in the in the link so swamp creek cabin is one go check them out they are remodeling redoing a little cabin um, and so they totally have the skills to come help us and finish, uh, some really fun projects. The project they're going to help us on is a staircase that you can put storage into in a tiny house, which I think will be super fun. I'm trying to see if there's anybody else here yet. Aardvark, you get me off my train of thought. You got to stop teasing me. Um, and so, uh, Aardvark, you're supposed to be helping me, not hindering me. Let me look at my notes. I do get a little bit nervous on these shows because I'm here by myself and I have to remember my questions and I have to also kind of pay attention to what's going on in the comments. So um, the people that we're going to be doing these uh, collaborations with, the first one is Essential Mountain Homestead, and he is going to be here next weekend, and we're going to do some really incredible projects. We're going to take a project from tree to finished product and explain everything along the way. To all intents and purposes, he's going to be teaching me how to be a manly man, and I am so excited. Um, he has all the equipment, he has the know-how, he has his own construction company, and so go check out Essential Mountain Homestead. They are kind of close to us. They're a few hours drive away, but their project is very similar to ours in that they're taking a pre-built shed and they're going to be finishing it. Theirs is just a little bit bigger than ours. So that is super excited. The second channel is Red Poppy Ranch, and he's friends with Essential Mountain Homestead, and they're doing a demolition of one homestead and using some of those materials to create their own homestead. And so we're hoping to do some uh, some videos with them, but they're right in the middle of their demolition, and they're trying to get a head start on their homestead when they can between the rain and the snow, because here in the West, we have a lot of rain and snow still. Um, so, Keeping It Dutch is here. Hey, how's it going? Deep South is here. Okay, Deep South, the video that I'm coming up tomorrow, I'm doing a shout out to you and the RV. 
So I'm going to make sure, I need to make sure to get a link in that. But uh, the beginning of the video, or no, because this video goes up tomorrow. So it'll be for Saturday. My video for Saturday will have Danny and Wanda, a little shout out to Danny and Wanda at the beginning of the video. Um, so, okay, I'm going to try and get through my notes this time, guys. Some of the projects that we'll be doing with Josh from the Essential Mountain Homestead are we're going to go to the sawmill to go and look at timber for, for cutting down, which type of timber, how to use a sawmill, all these kind of very basic things that if you really don't know anything about the tools, you don't know if you want to make the investment, you really don't know which place to start, he's your guy. So again, I have his link and everybody else's link below. Uh, the other wonderful thing is that our website is up, and a man, oh, I get so flustered on here. I know your name. Why am I having such a hard time? So Amanda Weber created our website, and she did a fantastic job. I'm really happy with it. And her website, for if you need a website, is amandaweber.com, and she does a fantastic job. Um, I do get so nervous with this. Why do I get so nervous? I've been doing so many of them. Um, okay, not normal tree said, are you ever coming through Yakima again? Yes, I'm sure we will be. Uh, we have, for one thing, when we go up to see um, Swamp Creek Cabin and do more collaborations with them, we have to go up in that direction anyway. Um, let's see. Somebody needs to send me a teleprompter. I do need a teleprompter. Thank you, Melba. Um, okay, so the other things I need to look at. Okay, so I'm going to stay on track. We have tons of enormous projects that we're working on. I'm super, 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 I don't know, super. Should I add another super? I'm really excited about these projects. And at the same time, you guys know what's happening with YouTube. And some of the things that we can't show anymore are uh, any kind of butchering, nothing graphic, and nothing controversial. And so um, for homesteaders, that is an interesting, that's an interesting list of things that we can't show anymore. And I think if you're just starting out, you can put up any kind of video you want to put up. If, if you're not monetized, no harm, no foul, you can put up what you want to put up, to my understanding. I know there's some gun channels that they've actually taken down, which I think is really rotten. I think you should be, if you know, it's one thing for advertisers to say, Say what you can and can't put up if you want to advertise with them. It's another thing people just aren't allowed to talk about what they want to talk about. So to fight against that, Tanji from Tanji the Caver's Wife, that's her channel. Tanji and I are putting together a Kickstarter for my channel in which I will take all my tips and tricks that have been spread out through all of my videos, whether it's butchering, milking goats, raising rabbits without having to purchase feed, raising chickens without having to spend like $80 a year on feed, um, how to get free resources, as far as like mulch or firewood, all of these tricks that I have to take and make one video out of it and then do it as a Kickstarter so that people who want that information can have it. Because what happens is when I put something graphic up on my channel, my channel actually gets dinged for it. I can still monetize my channel, but I, I do get, my channel does get dinged for it. And I'm not really sure how to, how to work against that, but I still wanna get the information out there. So if we do a Kickstarter, create a video, that we can then put on my website, it takes all that away. And I can I can show more family-friendly content on my YouTube channel, and you guys can still have access to the how-to information. It's not up yet. We're going to try and have it up by this weekend. I don't know if we'll be able to get that done because uh, it is a lot of work to get them put together. But I'm excited about that too. So lots of projects. All right. Dolph Manson, everyone please hit that like button. Yes, please hit the like button. OK, Sidebuster Living, have you been getting fiber and quilts? Not yet. Not yet, which might be a good thing because I have no space. <laughs> Our little cabin is all of the space we have right now. Um, so it's probably a good thing we haven't. But we have had a lot of offers for help on projects, which we do need to get the projects done before we can really move into the little house. So it's OK that it's happening in that order. That And it takes a lot of time to make a quilt. So I do know that if people have it on their mind to make something like that, it, it is a time consuming project. Sandra Clark said, will you be doing any more spinning videos? I will be as soon as we have everything set up. I prefer to spin in a very picturesque setting. I love it to be cozy and pretty. And so uh, that's a big deal for me. I don't like to, I don't like to spin in squalor. 
And I wouldn't call what we have right now squalor, but we're, we're living in the RV next to the tiny house, which is very small. And we would have more space if we were in the tiny house, but the tiny house isn't finished enough for our weather right now. We've had snow a lot, lots of rain, that kind of thing. Yes. What else? All right, Skip Slater said, have you considered being on Patreon? We do have a Patreon account. And anybody who wants to be one of our patrons, go for it. We are taking our already created uh, butchering videos and putting them on the patron account so that you guys still have access to them, but so that my channel doesn't get dinged. I know it sounds so awful. It sounds like I'm so selling out. Um, at this point, I don't, I don't know what else to do. I'm not sure exactly what to do. Um, but we have been getting regular emails from YouTube saying that this video has been demonetized and that video has been demonetized. So we're just, I don't know, it's their, it's their site. I guess they can say what we do and don't put up to, to some degree. <laughs> Adventures Aardvark said, I won't need the Kickstarter video. I'm gonna hire a redhead. <laughs> I hear they can be feisty and difficult to work with. I would be careful of redheads. Um, Sod Buster Living said, ha, I have the fabric selected for a quilt. Gotta finish my daughter's quilt before I make for anyone else whistles innocently I love quilts I love homemade quilts I am asking that they be small like lap size quilts because I want to be able to to put them up on display and make sure that that the whole of the quilt can be seen and so the beautiful artwork that's been set in the past has been on the small because I don't want you to spend 700 hours on something I, I want it to be small and beautiful and picturesque but not like a work of of grueling fingers bleeding project so I would be so excited if you did make me a quilt. Um, hey, Mr. Vane, how's it going? Um, we're going? We're doing well. We're really cold. It's been very cold, lots of snow. Hey, Tiffany, how are you? Now, Tiffany is one who sent me things before, or didn't send me before. What am I thinking? She made me soap to take home, and I have it stuck in a little bag to keep safe until I can put it up on a pretty cupboard in the tiny house. Those kinds of things I love. Um, Heidi's here, too. Um, let's see, Frederick Nolan said, Julia, are you planting your bakers yet? No, if we plant them this early, what happens is that as the frost comes, um, we have frost, last year our last frost date was June 28th. And um, while they're okay in the ground, once they come up, uh, the frost hits them and it's, we, we, it's just so cold here right now. <laughs> Lori Family Home said, yes, we have a redhead, yes. <laughs> Redheads can be trouble. Um, Deep South Homestead, contemplating mixing 60 sacks of concrete mix, oh my gosh, by hand? Wow. <laughs> contemplating, yeah, don't work too hard at it. Okay, all right, so Deep South Homestead said, oh no, that sounds like work. So for any of you who don't know, Deep South Homestead, they have our RV that we went on our long road trip with. So if most of you are familiar with me from my road trip and from the tiny houses, um, that, that RV is being fixed at Deep South Homestead, so make sure to go check them out for the work that they're doing on it. They're doing a great job. Again, they have some of those skills that I'm so desperately wanting to acquire. The, here's the thing about skills. If you have a skill, then you can create anything that is in your mind. If you don't have the skills, you have to either pay somebody else to do it, or you can do it incorrectly yourself or kind of hope that you're doing it the right way. And, um, and so I have quite a list of manly men that I am excited to, uh, I'm really hoping they rub off on me and I can get it all straight. Um, you know what I should do? I should just take my earphones out. <laughs> I'm not listening to myself. There we go, now I don't echo. Um, so, mom, yeah, Rain Country said it's really cold here too. We had one nice warm day last week. I have a nasty sunburn on my neck from our warm day last week. I was out there, I think I was out there for about 12, 14 hours just playing with the goats. Um, Mama Grow said, will you be putting a storage shed next to your tiny house? I don't think so. Um, because of the loft and because of the side of the size of the tiny house that we got, I don't think we'll need a shed. Um, I'm going to be very deliberate in the way that we plan it and put it together. This is the other thing. Um, the reason that the videos are coming up slowly for our tiny house is because of the weather and also because I'm still in the like the planning and zoning stage 
we did just get our permit to have it there so we're permitted and we're safe if we wanted to put septic or anything else in we would have to go and get new permits and have the health department come out and check things and so right now what we're focusing on is just finish, finishing the inside making it look pretty and um, doing these fun projects so let's see Yeah, 93, deg 93 degrees today in Florida. Yes, it would be very warm. Uh, Mr. Rain said, how big is the tiny house, Julie? It is 12 by 32, so it's not tiny, and it has a double loft. So I'm really, really excited about the size. Every time I go in there, it just feels like my happy place. Um, in the end, what we might do, because we will be traveling again, is we, we're just not really sure what we're going to do. At the moment, it's rented. And we have the option to pay it off at the end if we decide that we'd rather do that than keep it. And so um, the projects are having to be a little bit fluid right now. All right. Deep South Homestead said, when I did my milk room, I hand mixed 72 bags to pay the, pour the floor. See, Danny, that's why you don't feel well now. <laughs> I've helped uh, do fence posts, like the formed not formed a uh, gate post, I guess, where we had to mix it by hand and then pour it up into the form and that kind of thing. I don't think we did 72 bags and there were two other girls there to help me. And I was sore for a week. Um, let's see. Okay, so everybody's talking to each other, so I'm going to sit here and have a conversation with my notebook for a moment. Um, let's see. Okay, so another fun thing is yesterday we brought rabbits back up to the homestead. Uh, we have a neighbor just down the road who watches the channel and offered all his baby bunnies because he was having to move from his homestead which is really sad. I, you know, it's hard to see somebody else have to leave, but at the same time we had to leave, we were gone for a year and to all intents and purposes, the homestead isn't ours anymore. I'm there to make sure my trees don't die. But as far as being able to harvest things and that kind of thing, it's not mine to harvest. It's my renters to harvest. And so I'm kind of watching from the other side of the fence a little bit too, and having lost my homestead, at least temporarily. Um, Dolphin Man asks, what kind of traveling are you thinking of? Traveling, we have some spe specific, we have some specific locations to go to. And um, John will be going back to school in Tulsa this fall. So that's one direction we're headed in. Um, let's see. So our friend gave us rabbits, which was super exciting. We already had the cages set up. The renters are wanting to do meat rabbits. So we now have all but one cage completely full. And I have some big old cages. And I'm thinking as they get older, we'll have to even spread out those. Um, I'm not sure how well the renters will do with the butchering part of things because these babies are cute. And um, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes with the helping the renters butcher things. Um, Sandra Clark said, oh, I want Angora rabbits, but we can only but we can only be part-time homesteaders. We did Angora rabbits in our backyard when we lived in town, and it wasn't a big deal. You just have to share them every three months. Okay, Lynn De DeBarrett said, did, did you say renting? You were renting the little house that's rented? No, our big house. Our homestead has a 2,300-square-foot home on it, and we're renting that. We rented it while we were gone to someone else who wanted to farm it. Now we're back, but we're in... The little house that's in the back corner of our property and um, with the agreement that we made with the renters most of the property is theirs to use with um, some limitations on what they can and can't do with it just because I don't want fruit trees to die um, mama grows said what do you do with the fur when you butcher so when I butcher I take the fur and I put it next to a fruit tree and I put mulch over the top so that it will eventually fertilize the ground all right. Tiffany Nash said, Julie, Polyface Farms has a great idea for raising rabbits and chickens. Yes, and we have used that method in our greenhouse. We have um, we have some permaculture in the greenhouse, and so we have to be careful about letting the birds run too free, but we used quail instead of chickens, 
and in the winter we take our rabbits and we put them into the greenhouse over the top of our raised beds and so that all their droppings fall into the raised bed and then we put in mulch and then they poop some more and that way our raised bed is built up and our hot bed is ready to go in the spring in February when we're ready to start gardening and so in fact that is where I got the idea was from Polyface Farms yes that's Joel Salatin for those of you who are not um, aware Sandra Clark said, can you send meat rabbits to a butcher? What would the cost be per rabbit? Um, usually when you send a small animal to a butcher, it'll be somewhere between five and seven dollars to have it finished. Um, okay, Dolphin Man, thank you. Prayers that all my family are healthy. We are healthy. I have a cold sore somewhere around here on my face. I ate peanut butter the other day. Serves me right. I need to be more care careful. Mr. Rain said, will you rent the big and little house out, then live in the new tiny house, Julie? Um, we don't really know what we're going to do because of the permitting. We are p permitted to have it there unattached to anything. But as far as being able to have people come and stay in it without us getting in trouble, we're trying to fill that out very carefully. We want people that come to see us to be safe, but we also, and, and we also don't want to get in trouble with the county. Rain Country said, Julie, are your grapevines starting to get leaves yet? Ours are so much further behind this than last year. Um, not really. They have little buds on them, but no actual green tips coming through. It's all just buds at this point. <sighs> yeah, Skip Slater, that's how much they charge. At the local butcher, he charges $7 per duck. Yeah, that's how much they charge for our ducks if we take them in. Okay, what else are we going to talk about? Okay, also below, I have a link for Paul, uh, Paul Wheaton's new Kickstarter. They're doing their PDC course, and so people keep asking them because people who are not able to go to it have been asking them if they can stream it live, the whole PDC course. And so they're trying to get a Kickstarter up right now in order to be able to pay for the equipment to be able to live stream that PDC course. So I have the link below. That's Paul Wheaton's Kickstarter. And um, go ahead, and if you love Paul Wheaton like I do, go ahead and be part of it. We were invited to go to the PDC to take films and that kind of thing, and I'm not a big crowd person, and so I'll be going up at a different time. Let's see, Dolph Man said, will you have a PO box when John is in school so we can all send things? Yeah, I hadn't thought of that, Dolphin Man. Um, we probably should. Adventurous Arvark said, Lindy Barrett, yes, they are making payments on the tiny house so that if it doesn't work out, they can return it. Yes, that's true. All right. What else was there? Um, I watched a video today that I really, really enjoyed. It was Be Not Slothful. It was their video, Encouraging Discouragement. And any of you who follow their channel know that they are debt-free with the exception of a little bit of money they put down on some property with someone else. Um, they're sharing the cost of it. But they are getting ready to move their trailer out onto their property, and they're really, really excited about it, and they keep hitting setbacks. And so the video that they just made was really what it feels like to be a homesteader who isn't really able to homestead at the scale that they want to yet. So be not slothful. Go check out that video. Um, it really touched my heart. It was a really cute family video, and... Um, I, I understood how they felt, because this year I'm watching my homestead from across the ditch. I'm not watching it from up close where I can really participate in it as much as I'd like to. Even though they're doing a fantastic job, to, you know, you, you just always want to tinker. When you're a gardener, you, you want to tinker, and I can't tinker because it's in their backyard, not mine. And so it was fun to watch that video. It was really nice. Um, okay. Okay, girl said you can use my address in Oklahoma if you want while you are here. Thank you. Oh, there's Be Not Slothful. Okay, there she is. We're actually 100% debt free. We paid cash for our property with taxes and split it with another family. Okay, so they're even more amazing than I said the first time. They are an incredible family, but this last video was really killer. Um, they're doing some amazing things on the property that they're actually on. And I, my understanding is that part of their problem they're having right now is... Um, Permitting, which it turned out was our huge problem on our property, is permitting. We can't even have an outhouse if we want to unless the health department comes out and inspects it. And we can't have a composting toilet unless the health department comes out and inspects it. And so I would imagine that they're having similar issues. 
Aardvark said, John is going to become a manly, a many, a manly man, LOL. Well, I think that everybody should know this, everybody, because Aardvark likes to tease us. Um, we have spent in-person time with Aardvark in our travels, and he is the manly man who originally tried to teach us how to build a cabinet. And the cabinet actually turned out really, really well. And um, and so Aardvark is definitely on my list of manly men. And it can be very intimidating working with him because he has so much knowledge. So uh, yes, I have much to live up to and much to learn. And hopefully all my friends who are trying to teach me don't get discouraged and frustrated with me by the time we're finished with this project. Um, let's see. Yeah, so that's what uh, Be Not Sloth will said. Yes, permits and meeting code. It is it is so hard, and I know that it's meant to be for our health and safety and that kind of thing. And um, it's interesting feeling like you're up against a brick wall and you can't really live the way you want to. Okay, J uh, Dolphman said, if it is fine to ask, will your John have to get a job to help pay for John's schooling? The school that John will be going to is exceptionally inexpensive. It's a tech college. And we do have money saved for him to be able to go do that. And I still have my YouTube job. It's one of the reasons why we're pushing for things like the Kickstarter and getting more information onto our website and away from YouTube is because that way, I, I mean, my value to my family is to be able to create, to grow food for my family. And secondary to my being a mother and homeschooling and growing food, secondary to that, my job is that I'm a YouTuber. And so if if we can be frugal, the YouTube should be enough, but I am hoping that John has a job secondary to going to school. It would, it would, it would, I think it would be the smart thing to do. Um let's see. I missed somebody saying something. What did somebody say? Oh, there's my thingy. Don't move. Okay. Um, sorry guys, I'm trying, I'm trying to go back and make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, down the dirty road 2016, how can I become a manly woman? Well, I don't think we want to really become a manly woman. I don't really want to be manly, but I do want to be a manly man. I don't know why they feel different in my brain, but they feel different in my brain. Um, all right. Yeah, and the, sometimes the permitting fees can be very expensive too. Ours, our permit for our shed was only $45, which was good. Um, let's see, I'm trying really hard not to miss things. If you guys could put them in bold, if you wanted me to answer them, it's hard for me to read them when they're so small. Um, okay, was there anything else we wanted to talk about? I'm not sure how long we have been on. We've been on for half an hour. Did anybody else have any questions about what we're doing? Again, the channels that we'll be doing collaborations with are Swamp, Swamp Creek Cabin, Red Poppy Ranch, and Essential, or is it Elemental? Oh, I get so confused. Essential or Elemental? <laughs> I'd have to go look at my own uh, description. Element. Oh, oh goodness! I only get confused when I have to say multiple channels, and I can't exactly remember. Um, let me remember. Essential. It is essential. Essential Mountain Homestead. Okay, be not slothful. What app do you use for YouTube Live? I do not use an app. I use Google Hangouts on my laptop. It works much better. The color doesn't go as wonky. Um, Wallace Lake Homestead made it. Hooray! Um, Judith Lawrence said, do your children just flow with the changes? I think that's a really, really good question. We're all struggling with the changes right now. I think the biggest change was leaving on the trip. The first three weeks was really fun. After the first three weeks, it got challenging for all of us. It, it, it was wonderful to go and meet people, and that was always the highlight of our trip, was to meet the people that we've been talking about um, and the people that we've been talking to. That was wonderful, but it was extremely challenging for the children. 
Uh, Kai in particular really struggled because she's she loves to move, she loves to dance, and a lot of our travel was really fast paced. So I would say that I'm very very grateful that that the that the moving so quickly is over. Um, right now we're spending a lot of time with family. We're spending a lot of time out in the sunshine, and we're doing the best we can to come back to normal. But I had a lovely I had a lovely message today on my YouTube message board from. A lady who who wrote and said, "I just wanted to tell you I appreciate you. I followed your whole trip, and I can see that you're just doing the best that you can with the hard situation. Doing everything that we've done has not been a choice from the beginning. It was a matter of um, something had we we had to do something, and we chose to do the trip. And the trip was a good thing for the business, and that's great. It was the decision we made, and now it's really nice not to be making that particular choice anymore." Yeah, yeah, everybody repost them. If I didn't see them, make sure to repost them because I, I can't keep up very quickly. Deborah H., this is how to be a manly man by a woman. Nope, it's not. I'm not explaining how to be a manly man. I am talking about the people who are going to teach me how to be a manly man, and that would be those channels down in the description below. I'm super excited to be, you know, smarted up, and and I'll put on some plaid and, and – uh, I don't know what else I'll do to look a little more manly, but we'll work on it. Um, okay, Mr. Rain said, what is John studying? He's going into computer sciences. Skip Slater said, when do you plan on traveling across the country again? I We won't make another trip like that if I can help it. We will go to specific places. We'll go to specific places and um, live there <laughs> or make very short trips that don't last very long where we have a home to go back to. Sandra Clark said, do you have videos about becoming a successful YouTuber? I do. I used to call them YouTube Tip Tuesdays. And every Tuesday I would get on and I would give a tip to YouTubers. And um, I thought they were very helpful, but a lot of people, there were kind of mixed reviews on it and I wasn't sure how helpful it was. Now instead, if you want help with your YouTube channel, I can do a consultation with you, I can watch your videos, and I, can, I have a live Skype chat with you about how to help you. Um, but the videos themselves didn't get enough views for me to really know that people cared about it. So if you wanted something like that, you can uh, go to my email, which is dirtpatchheaven at gmail.com. Um, but I do help people with that, especially like if I do a collaboration with you and, and it's a cross collaboration and you want help, I can help you with things like that. Judith Lawrence said, I think your children are very well behaved. My children are working on it. Thank you. <laughs> Dolphin Man, please, everyone, think of if you're able to send John a card in the mail with a little love gift inside. I'm sure he would appreciate anything. Well, I know that um, <laughs> John would probably love to have a little note from everybody. That's probably true. Um, okay, UMC Darren said, yes, videos are honest and heartfelt. Enjoy them. I'm glad you enjoyed them. Barbara Nelson said, is someone renting your home and for how long? Yes, our renters are here until they have a year left. So about this time next year is when they'll be done. They actually sound like they want to rent longer, which would probably be good. Um, <laughs> Heidi said, darn, I really thought John was getting his master's in smarty pantism with the minor in Hefner shirts. So true. So true. Okay, Heidi. Heidi's rain country. Sorry. They should make sure to call you by your channel name. <clears throat> that was a good one. Um, yes. Okay, so anything else? I'm trying really hard to not get too off topic this time. And so I want to make sure everybody gets to answer, ask questions and tell me what you think and what you're wondering. Otherwise, I find the longer that I talk, the more I get distracted, and then I say things that I'm not supposed to say, and then my husband talks to me afterwards, and he said, why did you say that? Okay, Fritchi said, what are you or he studying? He is studying computers, computer science type, type things. Stigander1 said, any suggestions for home studying on a budget? Yes, and that is the video that we're trying to put out as a Kickstarter. I've already made that video. And I took it down because I made it in the early days of my YouTube experience when <clears throat> I was not dressing quite as modestly. 
and I didn't really want that to be a video that kind of represented my channel so much just because of the modesty issue, so I made it private. I do have it up in another format, but I don't think it was as good as the original, but I will be taking all those tips that I did in that video. Um, the video was called How to Homestead the, How to Homestead the Smart Way, and um, but this new Kickstarter video will have all of those tips in it. Things like free firewood and inexpensive animals and how to feed your animals for free and all that kind of thing. Okay, so Dolphin said, I'm so glad you came on. Well, thank you. It's nice to be here. All right, any other questions, guys? I know I'm supposed to be here for a full hour, but I do have a bit of a struggle um, staying on when I don't have anybody else to talk to like in person who can say, nope, you don't want to talk about that, honey. And John is in town doing other things. I don't know where is the best place for that. All right. Sub driver said, an immodest Julianne. Yes. If any of you were here from the very, very beginning, when I first started, I was not always very modest. Um, okay, sounds like Rain Country is out. Thanks for stopping by, guys. So, any other thoughts? Adventurous Aardvark, do your worst now. I can now take it because I'm not reading a script. Anybody else? Going once. Going twice. I don't think there's anything else I'm supposed to be talking about, right? Subdriver said, have you thought about selling out totally when you moved to Oklahoma? We have offered that option to our renters. We've asked them if they would be interested in buying in time and they are thinking and praying about it currently. Um, Dolphin Man said, please say a big hello to John from all of us. I will. He's not back yet. Otherwise, I think he'd be in here with me. Um, let's see. Adventures Aardvark said, I thought the original video was fine. Yes, you think it's fine, but you're not a middle-aged Christian woman who hates my guts, at least not to my knowledge. Bonnie Key said, how do you incorporate your children into homesteading? Um, mostly I, I do a lot of the work myself and mostly what it is, is that, um, I use homesteading to keep me busy so that as a homesteading mom, I don't get bored and depressed. So I will sit the kids down. I will cook and clean and do other things I need to while they're homeschooling. When we're done with homeschooling, they'll come out and they'll play around me while I'm homesteading. And to, to some degree they help with things, but generally I have to supervise them pretty well because they are living animals we're dealing with. And I don't want them to die. Okay, Deep South said, tell John and the girls hi. I will. Dolphman said, please tell a friend about this channel. Thank you. Um, Ridge Rover said, do you ever think you'll get to Zilla? I think so. I think we will because I have sis my sisters up there. Um, what about books? Can you use kid kids' books? I have tons of kids' books. The, the one thing I didn't really get rid of that much was all my schooling books and, and that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> sub driver, you're awful. Um, okay, Lindy Barrett said, Julie, what do you believe you'll be doing after John finishes his schooling? Your future. Um, well, um, after John's done with schooling, and actually during while John is doing schooling, I'm really hoping to be able to cut back on the intensity of the YouTube videos to maybe be able to cut back to three times a week and have it be okay that I cut back to that much. If you're dependent on YouTube, you have to do it every day if, if, if that's what you're trying to do. And I would like to not be as dependent on YouTube. I still want to have friends on YouTube, but um, and I want to share things on YouTube. I, I enjoy the platform, but I don't want to be dependent on it. I want to be able to um, not have to read mean comments every day. That would be really nice if I didn't have to read mean comments every day. Um, all right, so it looks like John came on. Um, Mama Girl said, did John have his surgery? How did he get hurt? I have not seen all your content. Uh, John got hurt at work and then coughed wrong in the shower and he slipped two discs and he has a third disc that he's having to watch pretty carefully. And he did have surgery and it did help. Um, Lindy Barrett, I love your videos. Thank you. 
All right. Ridge Rover said, open invitation in Zilla. Well, thank you. We love Zilla. Can died 33 said, can't you just block all the trolls? I can, but in order to block them, I have to have read the comment, and it kind of brings me down. Um, how did John hurt his back? Um, it was overuse and bad. It was just overuse. In certain jobs, you're just hard on your back, and he had one of those kinds of jobs. Um, anything else? John's going to tell me now that I can't leave. Let's see. I want to bring in more hair braiding and natural cosmetics, but that'll probably be over on Natural Happy, my other channel. Right now, I am editing on editing one day, and then I I edit two videos so that I don't have to come in and edit again for a couple days. And it has worked really, really well so that I can really focus on the girls for two days a week and I don't have to think about the internet, and then I have one day where I focus on the internet all day, and then I have two days where I don't focus on it at all. So that's what we've been doing. So I think I'm done if everybody's okay with that. Hey, Living Like Claire's there. Hey, guys, go see Living Like Claire. She is Big Family Homestead's oldest if you watch their channel. So make sure to go see Living Like Claire. She is such a cute little thing. Valerie Critchley said, what made you decide to get a tiny house? I've always wanted a tiny house. When I was in my 20s, I didn't want to live with my parents and they had a lot of property. And I wanted to just put a little house on the back corner so I had some autonomy and it would be a price that I could pay off quickly. And so I never lost that dream. Um, bye, Deep South Home Homestead. Um, Sodbuster Living said, how do you find enough content to post every day? You know, that's not actually that hard on a homestead. There's always something going on. You're planting something, you're harvesting something, you're teaching people how to use a wood-burning stove, um, you're sharing some kind of recipe. For me, when I'm on the homestead, it's very, very, very easy to get a video up every day. It's not the actual create, it's not the actual taking of the video that's hard or finding content. It's having time to edit it that gets really tricky. If I make a really good video, it generally takes me about 12 hours to edit it. What? Me? Are you talking to me, Adventure Zardbark? What? Sandy Claus said, you and your girls have beautiful hair. Well, thank you. And we've, we're going to try The girls have a big thing about uh, how to train your dragon. They really love that show, and they want me to braid their hair that way. Their hair isn't quite long enough yet, but we'll get there. Um. <laughs> um. Let's see, anything else? Sodbuster Living said, I guess they take all that knowledge for granted. Well, it's it's what, one of the things about homesteading is sometimes you feel like nobody notices what you're doing. When you're cooking from scratch, when you're planting a garden, and when you're making this huge difference in your own family, you want the rest of the world to know what a big difference it makes for your family. And so I think the YouTube channel, when you're homesteading, is very helpful because you get to um, you get to share the information, which you think is so important for other people. Um, Be Not Slothful said, yes, the good videos take several hours to edit. I never realized that until I started YouTubing, LOL. It's so true. If you want a really good video, especially if you collaborated with another person so they're depending on you, that video has got to be killer so that it helps both of you. Um, Candide33 said, I live in a 170-year-old plantation house and I want a tiny house. I love tiny houses. Me too. Wallace Lake Homestead said, great, DSH. All right, any other questions? Like I said, I went through all my notes, so I don't know what anybody else wants me to say. <sighs> Somebody's trying to get a hold of me. Oh, have fun. Tiffany, have fun with your hubby. Living Like Claire said, oh, gotcha, that was between them. Lindy Bear said, we're moving back into our bus. You have been a huge inspiration for me. Just do it again. Well, thank you. I hope to be an inspiration. 
I'm hoping that things warm up a little bit here because I don't feel very inspirational right now because all I feel is cold. All right. Tina G said, are you finished having kids? Well, we have two children and they haven't been finished yet. So I guess we're not finished having kids because my mom says you're never really done. It's one thing to have babies and then it's another thing to raise babies. And with two little girls that are as full of uh, pickles as mine are, we may never be finished. Um, let's see. All right, are we good then? Anybody else? Last takers? Any more mischief from Aardvark before we leave? Okay, so our next live show, thank you, Dolphin Man. Our next live show is Thursday at 4 o'clock Mountain Time. And I do put it up a few hours before so everybody can see what the time will be. And um, I guess I will head out. And hopefully you guys are excited for all the new projects that are coming up because I'm excited. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. <laughs>